It's like looking into the future. Welcome to a relaxed fit review. I'm on the road right now. I'm trying to keep all these pieces moving and I just blew out my voice. So uh, hopefully this sounds okay, but we've got a really exciting product to test while on a road trip. This is the TCL Nextwear. And these are really fancy glasses that simulate sitting in front of a super large TV. I guess I shouldn't call this a road review because what I'm playing with here isn't a finished retail product. These will be on sale in a bit. Um, I don't know what the exact uh, date and availability for North America, but they will be coming to retail channels. This is a product that will be sold to consumers. But what I have is an earlier version of this that uh, the folks at TCL were kind enough to send my way so I could play with. And it's a flavor of face computing that I've been excited about for a really long time. Just taking a quick flashback trip down memory lane, Sony used to sell a cinema headset. It wasn't VR, but it was totally enclosed. And it was supposed to feel like you were sitting in an empty movie theater all by yourself. These do not create that same sense of isolation. TCL's Nextwear is a bit more practical than that. The idea is that you might take these out on the go. And since I'm on a road trip and I do a lot of work from my phones, I figured this would be a good, a good test of TCL's claims. Considering some of the VR headsets I've played with in the past, this is super lightweight. Again, when you're putting something on your face, you kind of want to balance the, the technological achievement against the convenience of actually using them. And while this does sort of make your face a little nose heavy, I'd say that in terms of weight, they're probably similar to uh, some of those like smart heads up displays. Like uh, when I was playing with the Focals by North, this isn't too far off. It's the right place to be because there aren't any batteries in here. This unit isn't self-powered. You plug it into a USB-C device, a laptop, a smartphone. You can plug them into a desktop if you wanted to. And that's what drives this whole, uh, this whole setup. So you don't have to worry about charging them. They're going to draw power from whatever's connected to them. And growing up into a world of 90s pop culture, they, they do. They kind of have a little bit of a Matrix vibe to them when you put them on like a... I'm totally hacking the mainframe, but immediately you can see this is different than a VR or immersive headset. The whole point is that I do have a significant field of view still open. I can still see a fair amount of space around me. You're not that jerk on an airplane who can't see when the flight attendant walks up to ask for your drink order. You can still kind of interact with the world around you or, or look down. There's a fair amount of down still available so you can see a keyboard and a mouse or maybe you have a notepad and some notes. This makes this very accessible. And I like that the setup is really simple. There are two micro 1080p displays that are then magnified and you focus as if you're just further than arm's length to a significantly larger monitor than you probably own in your home. And a little sensor here at the top, they turn the screens off when they detect that they're not you know, right up against someone's face, which is a great consideration because if you are running this off of a phone, you gotta be mindful of that additional power draw. And even though we're keeping the setup really simple, there are little speaker vents over these arms. So they go right over your ear. If you're right next to someone's head, you will be able to hear what they're listening to or what they're watching, but they're surprisingly discreet. Again, I, I feel like if you were in a moderately busy coffee shop, you're probably at a distance away from someone else at another table where that wouldn't interfere with someone else's sitting and drinking coffee. That being an open ear solution is also kind of nice, but you might have to compete against noise in your environment. And I really do love how simple this whole setup is. It just folds down like a pair of glasses and then opens up and you plug in one cable and you're ready to fire up an additional monitor or use a desktop mode on a smartphone. The only hardware criticism, the only build criticism that I have is that this is a fixed cable on this one earpiece. And I feel that's, for me, always going to be uh, uh, an anxious failure point. Uh, if you know something happens to this cable, is there an easy way to repair them? Is there an easy way to replace it? And I know it would complicate the ear 
the, the sort of over ear design here, but I would like to see some kind of detachable cable, like make this USB-C on both sides. And that way, if you need to, you could also go with the longer cable if you wanted one. It's a concern, but I would say that's a pretty minor criticism if you were considering some type of work and entertainment style solution like this. Because in operation, it does achieve what I think TCL is setting out to do. It, it's like you could just throw a really nice TV in your backpack and have it accessible whenever you want it. If you're into tech, you've probably played with a number of other portable VR style solutions. And we often run into those issues. Like if you ever played with Daydream or Google Cardboard, you know, you use your phone as a VR uh, generating machine and then you have these lenses that magnify parts of your phone screen. It wasn't the nicest experience because you got a lot of that sort of screen door effect. There's none of that here. It really does feel like you're sitting in front of a nice HD TV. I'm doing that thing where I'm really trying to close focus to see if I can discern those individual pixels. And sure, it's, it's 1080p, but it's 1080p focused at the appropriate viewing distance. Image quality is great, clarity is great, and the sound is pretty good for these tiny little over-ear speakers. One of my other potential concerns was the open design. We look at VR headsets and we think, oh, well, we need to close everything off so that you don't get light or reflections or nothing distracts from that view. But these actually show us a potential for kind of a mixed mode immersive effect. The screen takes up most of your field of vision. And if you're in a really bright location, like I'm having some trouble, I'm kind of backlit shooting this video right now, of course, some of that light is going to interfere with the image, but we've got to balance that against what you would normally use in a situation like that. So if you were sitting outside and working off of a laptop, there's way less glare here than what you would experience on a laptop screen. And I got to shoot TCL some kudos because they've built a product that is kind of ahead of their main phone line. You know, the TCL, we just, I just recently did a video on the TCL 20 Pro 5G. And in most regions, the phone that's available to buy now is not capable of driving. It doesn't have the video out support for these glasses. So the, the first generation of this product is most likely going to be paired with other phones and laptops. If you've been following my channel and my love for lap docs and desktop modes, we're talking about LG Screen Plus, we're talking about Moto Ready 4, and of course, Samsung DeX. With the next where TCL did send over a version of the 20 Pro 5G, which does have support for video output. And I really hope this is a trend that TCL continues on their Pro line of devices. TCL has included a desktop mode, which in its first generation, is capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with DeX. This is better than LG Screen Plus, and it makes the 20 Pro 5G with the output display support an immediate competitor against phones like the LG Velvet from last year. Premium build quality, a very good array of cameras, a, a gorgeous OLED display on the front, an IR blaster headphone jack memory card support, and the ability to drive better productivity software, a full Windows style environment right out that USB-C port. There's something critically exciting about a phone in the mid range, you know, in that four to $600 territory, which is feature complete and is able to drive a number. This is as flexible as you want it to be. If you want it to be a full fledged computer, you can make it a full fledged computer. If you want it to be the most basic smartphone, you don't have to worry about the average consumers getting left behind. I feel companies selling phones above $600, especially in that $1,000 territory, could learn a few things from this phone right here. But I digress. Obviously, it's a different set of pros and cons over using a lap dock. I am drawing additional power off of the phone battery, but my travel sort of setup could be a little bit smaller than walking around with a full laptop style clamshell gadget dock. I did bring along my Uperfect X so I could kind of compare and contrast the workflow. And, and it's interesting, you know, like I've got a little fold out Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, 
typing on that, I'm pretty good, but obviously not as good as if I had something sort of properly in my lap. So if you're working off of, you know, hotel beds or couches or something like that, you know, a little floppy Bluetooth keyboard and mouse might not be your jam. You might want to look at an all-in-one, like I've got a Logitech, has a trackpad off to the side. But really, these will hang for as good as the software that you throw at it. There's something kind of magical about putting this on your face and docking Netflix to one corner and maybe having some little notes off on the side and then half screen, a Microsoft Word document, I'm getting my writing done and I'm still watching a movie and it's all kind of contained right here but it feels like it's further out in space. Uh, you know, the, the, the concern is, uh, obviously you can't wear this if you've got glasses. My wife was wearing her contacts and she put this on and she noticed that after a couple minutes of kind of playing around when she took them off, it took her a couple blinks to get her medium focus back. You are focusing a little closer than you would be if you had the proper ergonomic setup for a monitor, but that is, that's gotta be balanced against the convenience and the portability of having a giant screen. I mean, you don't travel with a nice giant HD TV. So you've got to kind of compartmentalize. You've got to kind of put this in the, in the category that it fits in. And it fits in a category of kind of only itself. It's where I'm getting more and more impressed with companies that are taking a few more risks with their accessories. There's something really special about getting this much right on a first generation of a concept like this, putting any kind of display on your face is not easy. We've seen the challenges that VR and AR have had, even just getting a heads up display like my focals, like this stuff is very difficult. The more we start interacting with our face and our head, the more personal, the, the more biological our accessories need to be. So to hit as broad an accessibility as this, as easy, to use as this is, I think is, is, a, is a really special accomplishment because that ease of use is absolutely critical. From the first generation of any kind of like home cinema headset or display or VR, the fact that we're down to one cable and you plug it in and the gadget you plug it into is probably going to know what to do with it that's where we're starting to find some kind of consumer accessibility. I'm out here in rural New Mexico. I'm visiting with some family and I'm, I'm watching my nephew play on his phone. He's got a Galaxy S10. Not the newest phone, still pretty powerful though. And I didn't have to do much to get him using this. That kid had never used Dex. So I got to show him something new on his phone at the same time as getting to show him a prototype display to use on his phone. So any concerns we have about, you know, average consumers and making this easier for them to use. He saw me plug in a cable. He saw Dex fire up right before his eyes. He looked down at his phone and there was a little toggle to turn his phone screen into a trackpad. And then he was ready to go. I didn't have to hold his hand or walk him through all of this technology. There were, there was no learning curve here. He uses a $300 Dell laptop for school, and now he's got a phone that can simulate a lot of what he does for school, and it's probably more powerful than his $300 laptop. That's where a good accessory can be so transformative to the consumer experience. That's where I get so excited about showing someone something new with something they already have. I can preach it in video after video, try and get more bang for your gadget buck, but seeing that play out in real life was kind of a magical experience. I definitely got some cool uncle points showing him that, but it was crazy to watch him. He did, he fired up Google Docs and then he moved over. He tried to play Sonic, completely unplayable on a little trackpad, but he instantly snapped like, oh, well I could maybe pair a controller with it. And he's got a PS4. And then immediately went on from there to play Five Nights at Freddy's where he had never played Five Nights and Freddy's in a more sort of immersive version. Like this would have been the equivalent of him like turning off all the lights and looking at a laptop screen. And here he was doing that all on his own. I wasn't telling him what to do from Dex on his S10 with these glasses. TCL has a reputation for lifestyle consumer electronics and in North America, they're probably best known for TVs. This is right in line with this company's vibe. This is, this is the right next step 
to kind of further their reputation, not just for consumer entertainment and consumption devices, but bleeding more into areas of productivity, a way to get more out of your phone. Like I said at the top of this video, this isn't the full finished retail product. It's really close. I, again, I, I have to imagine if there are any little tweaks to the final retail design, they're gonna be minimal. What I've got here is so well polished and so well executed. I've been very impressed with how this is operated, but we also don't have any finalized shipping or availability to North America and pricing is ballparking right now. Um, where TCL has sent press releases and sort of the reviewer's guide for me to check these out, we're looking at a price that's kind of in a mid-range TV. This is likely going to be more expensive than some of the laptops that I've reviewed, but we're also looking at two of the best portable, high-quality mini displays for image clarity that I've ever used. And it's phenomenally difficult to get nice display into fold up collapsible portable uh, form factor. Like this, this is not easy. This obviously isn't going to be the solution that replaces the TV in your living room. But as a travel companion, it's been phenomenal. And I do see some use, some idea of, of home accessibility. I think the danger is this is kind of the only one of its kind. So no matter what they price this at or what they sell this for, you're gonna have a bunch of gadget nerds saying, well, that's too expensive, it should be less. When there's not really anything to compare it to. I would compare this against a nice HD TV that you can fold up and almost fit in your pocket. So what does that cost? Regardless, I'm going to be really sad to send these back. But I, I guess I would shout out to TCL. I mean, if TCL is watching this video, um, one, I would see if there's any way to make an interchangeable or detachable cable. I, I don't know. People are doing crazy things with magnets these days. That could work really well, too. And while I wouldn't change the overall shape or form factor significantly, I would maybe ask, if there's a way to replace all of this glossy plastic with something a little bit more matte finish. Again, you've got these fingerprint smudges just from handling them and it looks like you're wearing really dirty sunglasses. I don't care that much about what I look like because I can't see me while I'm wearing these, but I think just in terms of general aesthetic, it would look a little nicer if we could. And then lastly, um, if there is a, like a generation two in the works, I think there could be some value to having a detachable sort of a guard or, or sort of um, uh, like a lens hood that you could attach to these glasses. Maybe something where you need that extra focus and you do want to go a little more VR headset. Like there's no head tracking. I'm not asking for that, but something that you could clip on to block any additional light that's coming through. Maybe you're just sitting at a cafe table and the light really is just slicing right into where the, the, the displays are. Something that could kind of just on there and then you could block any side light like a lens hood on a nice camera. But for those of you watching this and for TCL, if you're watching this, I am phenomenally impressed with this. I am always going to be excited about those accessories that help us take our phones, our portable electronics, our portable computing brains to just another, another tier. And this is an experience that's so easy to share. I couldn't share my focals by, by North. That was too biologically attached to my eye. It, it wasn't something that could translate. This I can pass around my entire family and they all get it immediately. I, I, it, there's there's nothing I need to explain. It's a it's a super nice TV in your pocket, <laughs> and you're done. That's all I have to say, and that makes me so critically excited for this product, and then hopefully some competition or or revisions of this product in the years to come. So, folks, I, I think that's about where I, I need to put a pin in this video before my voice totally fails on me again. Um, I'm going to be wrapping up. Uh, the road trip using these as my primary screen plus device with my uh, V60. And uh, I I'm, I'll probably have a little bit more to say probably on one of my podcasts, but the whole experience has been fantastic. Th this has been a wonderful um, uh, accessory test drive. So I, I, I need to send a, a huge thumbs up to the folks at TCL for sending them my way, uh, letting me uh, take these for a spin because 
they're, they're not retail yet. <laughs> I don't often get to play with prototypes, so that's also making me a little more excited there too. I'll of course leave a link down below where you can find more information on the TCL Nextware. And hopefully soon we'll get pricing and availability for North America. As always folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos. The sharing is always the best part and subscribing to the channel. Supporting a channel like mine, huge in this day and age. So I greatly appreciate those of you who are checking out the links in the description below. Maybe you're shopping a little merch, that kind of stuff really does help keep this video content flowing. You can catch a full list of all of my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguide.com, or you might consider, just maybe, joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a list of the coolest tech pals on the web today. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, though I did share a photo of a really funky bug from Vanderwagon. So you might want to check that out on my Instagram. It looked gross. And I'll catch you all on the next video. <laughs>